Good evening. evening. Welcome to our celebration of the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join us for our gathering hymn number 313, Gather Your People. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God.
Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, If only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it that we may carry it out? Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out. No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. I will praise the name of God in song. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, 
the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. The parable that we just heard about the Good Samaritan, I think, is so familiar to us that we often only see one of its dimensions. The dimension we tend to focus on is its presentation of a model for us to imitate. And we hear Jesus finishing that parable by saying, go and do likewise. In that sense, it is crystal clear. It's a crystal clear explanation of the great commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And so if we strive to follow it, we will, without a doubt, live a worthy and meaningful and fruitful life. So today the church reminds us that we should be striving to follow it. Go and do likewise. But this parable also has another dimension. The Good Samaritan is, above all, a self-portrait of Jesus and what Jesus has done for you and for me, for the human family as a whole, and for each of us individually. We were like that man left on the side of the road to die. Each of us has been robbed of our original holiness by original sin. Our selfishness and our sins and the sins of others have deeply wounded our souls. And so we lay on the side of life's path in need of that Savior. We've been bruised and broken and wounded by life in this world in which we live. And so in his incarnation, Jesus comes to us like that good Samaritan. He is that merciful Lord who heals and restores us with the oil and wine of the sacraments, who pays for our salvation with his own sacrifice on that cross at Calvary, who entrusts the boundless riches of his grace to that innkeeper, the church, who in turn watches over our convalescence our growth into Christian maturity until Jesus will come again. If Jesus commands us to be good Samaritans to one another, it's only because he has walked that path ahead of us. When we consider that Jesus also happens to be the second person of the Holy Trinity, we get a glimpse of how much he really loves us. Jesus is the Word of God. He is God, the Father's own Son. He's in the image, the self-image of the Father, a perfect and complete image that he shares with the Father is a very, very divinity of Christ, of Christ in God, exists as that distinguishable person, that eternal Son. And today, St. Paul in the second reading reflects on this unique nature of Jesus Christ for us. He proclaims that Jesus is the image of the invisible God, He is God, our creator, who has lowered himself to our level so that we in our humanity can recognize him. St. Paul teaches us that in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible. This includes every person, even those who reject Jesus and sin against him, even those thieves who had left that man on the side of the road to die even those self-centered priests and Levites who had refused to help that dying man. All things were created through Jesus and for him, St. Paul concludes, in him all things hold together. This is Jesus, not just a wise teacher, not just a nice guy who may have been misunderstood, not just one great religious leader and philosopher among many but Jesus, the Lord, the Creator, the Savior, the King of the entire universe. This Lord, this Jesus, has absolutely nothing to gain by coming down to earth to save you and me, to suffer for us. He did it only for us, only because he wanted to give that priceless gift of his friendship to us. 
He continues doing this in every Mass that we celebrate here, when he comes to be present to us in the Most Holy Eucharist, to heal our wounds, to strengthen us with this Most Blessed Sacrament. We need Jesus. We live in a difficult world. We ourselves are sinful and fallen human beings. And so Jesus for us is our Good Samaritan. And only Jesus' help can get us back on our feet, keep us there, and infuse us in the inner spiritual strength that we all know that we should have. In a culture drunk with self-indulgence and self-reliance and extreme individualism, we need to be reminded of this truth of our faith. And the Church reminds us of that today. During this Mass, we thank the Lord for coming to save us, for not walking by like the priest and the Levite, but stopping beside us, going out of his way for us. And when he does it again today by coming to strengthen us in the Holy Eucharist, we need to promise him that we will not just thank him with our words, but also with our actions. Every Christian is called to be another Christ. And Jesus wants to reach out to the people in our circles of friends and family, just as the Good Samaritan reached out to that unfortunate man who had been beaten and robbed. And Jesus wants to reach out through you and me. Each of us knows people who have been robbed and beaten up by the troubles of life in this fallen world. This week, encouraged by the example that Jesus gives us in this parable today, and nourished with his own very supernatural strength through the Holy Eucharist that we will receive. We need to allow Jesus to reach out to that person that is in need through us. By inviting us to be his Good Samaritan co-workers, Jesus gives us an opportunity to show him how grateful we really are. This week, don't let the opportunity just slip by unnoticed. Obey Christ's command to go and do likewise. When we do, the Lord promises we will become truly alive. Pray for that grace this week. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to our loving Father our prayers of petition that all members of the church bear witness to love of neighbor as did the Good Samaritan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That world leaders work toward peace and assist the victims of war and strife. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That all people have access to affordable health care, education, and housing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That our parishes always welcome the stranger, shelter the homeless, and continue to build a community of love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That more young people will respond to God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious, and for our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Bonnie Sarola, the people of the parishes, and Joseph Kubik, for whom this weekend's masses are offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts and minds, and for those who have no one to pray for them, We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Father, we present you our needs. We ask you to hear them and to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are brought forward and the altar is prepared, we will sing number 466, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good, the good of all, his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Geoffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the table of the Lord, we will sing number uh, 516, Holy Wisdom, a Lamp of Learning, 516. Tune in us to our right. 
righteous will as the sinful knee of ages claim our best our finest skill shape our search for peace and justice through prophetic deed and word christ conduct us set our rhythm the god's praise we never heard Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one announcement for you. This Wednesday's Mass will be at 8 a.m. here at St. Mary's. There will not be an evening Mass at Coleraine at 6 o'clock because of a schedule conflict. So this week's Mass for our parents is Wednesday morning here at 8 o'clock. And I see a number of faces I don't recognize, so we welcome visitors who are here tonight. Welcome, we're glad you joined us for Mass. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. We go forth from our celebration, singing number 739, Lead Me, Lord.
Are you? 